Hi, and welcome to this tutorial, which will focus on compressor sidechain filters and their various uses. It's pacing. I'm using a song called Drop of a Hat for my examples, written and performed by my old bandmate Stefano Esposito. And I'm going to work backwards and start with the main bus compressor, which I'm using to glue the whole mix together. Proceeds Auto Gain allows me to experiment with different ratio settings without having to constantly adjust the makeup gain to compensate. But particularly with higher ratios, the kick drum is triggering noticeably more gain reduction than anything else. And this changes the mix balance so that the kick drum is less prominent than I intended. I could compensate for this by turning the kick drum channel up a touch. But of course, this will make the compressor react even harder to those kick drums. Or in other words, the compressor will be fighting the change. And we might also start to hear other parts of the mix pumping audibly with the kick, which might be desirable in some genres, but which I don't really want in this case. It might therefore be better to tweak the compressor so that it doesn't react as hard to the kick drum in the first place. So let's slide open the advanced tab to reveal the sidechain setting. The sidechain being that part of the compressor that monitors the audio levels and decides when to turn down the gain. The two sliders at the bottom control high pass and low pass filters respectively. But if I turn down the low pass slider, we don't hear any reduction in the high frequency content. These filters aren't affecting the main signal path at all. They only filter the sidechain signal that the compressor is listening to. So let's set the low pass slider back fully open and wind the high pass filter up to about 70 Hz. The side chain is no longer hearing the low sub bass, so the compressor doesn't react as much to the sub bass in the kick drum. I can now experiment with higher ratios for stronger gluing effects without reducing the impact of the kick drum so much. This is probably the most common use for compressor side chain filters. When processing a mix or sub mix, the sidechain filters allow us to exclude parts of the mix so that the compressor doesn't react to them. Usually it will be bass parts that have the most energy. Here I have a compressor over a subgroup of all the guitars, and I can use the high pass filter to stop the compressor reacting so much to the low end of the bass guitar. The filters can also be useful when processing individual channels, however, not just mixes and subgroups. Let's switch to the vocal for another example. I'm using the mono VST version in this case, so the sidechain panel is slightly simpler with none of the stereo options. But we still have the sidechain high and low pass filters, and if we press the audition button below, we can listen to the sidechain signal directly. Let's set these to isolate the sibilant S region, around 8 to 10 kHz. And as this reduces the signal levels quite a bit, I'll also turn up the sidechain gain to compensate. I can now dial in compression that only reacts to the high frequency sibilant content. In other words, I've created a basic but quite effective DS. Of course, it would be easier to load up Pro DS instead. With default settings, ProDS also ducks the overall signal gain whenever an S or T sound is detected. But the sidechain filters, compression behaviour, and especially the single vocal detection mode are all optimised for DSing duties. And in this case, the default settings work perfectly, and I don't even have to adjust the threshold or range. I'm not going to delete the compressor just yet, however. Steph has a powerful voice, and this invariably translates to a wide dynamic range. In other words, his choruses get much, much louder than the verses. I applied some compression while tracking, but his highest, loudest notes still need some extra taming to avoid becoming harsh. This isn't just because they are louder, however, but also because these higher notes contain prominent harmonics in the upper mid-range, where human hearing is most sensitive. I don't want to cut these frequencies with EQ, as this risks making the voice sound dull and pushing it back in the mix. So instead, let's tune the compressor sidechain filters to isolate the harsh upper mid region. And I can now dial in compression that reacts firmly to the high notes, while hardly touching the quiet and gentle low parts. 
This trick can be a lifesaver when dealing with powerful female vocals in particular, but also with brass instruments such as trumpets, which can often suffer from the same problem. OK, let's dive in deeper and look at the compressor on the kick drum mic. I want to add a bit more punch to the sound, so I've chosen the Opto style with its slightly slower and less program dependent attack. And I'm using the auto gain mode again, this time so that I can try out different attack time settings without having to adjust the makeup gain to compensate. Slow settings result in more of a thump to the sound as the initial transient squeezes past the compressor. While the fastest setting makes the drum sound fatter as the transients are smashed off and the body of the drum is turned up in relation. Now notice what happens if I wind down the sidechain low pass filter. As the compressor is now listening to just the slower, low frequency part of the sound, it can't react to the mid and high frequency attack transient. And we now get a solid attack to each drum hit, even with the fastest attack time. I can now tune the compressor attack time and the sidechain low pass filter frequency to add just the right amount and type of punch to the drum. Tuning the sidechain filters is therefore a powerful way to tailor the behaviour of a compressor. But like all compressor parameters, the best settings will always depend on the material and the context. A bass guitar might benefit from compression tuned to just the mid-frequencies, for example, to catch pops and string slaps without losing the dynamic shape of the low end. But in this case, I think it works better to tune the compressor to the low bass frequencies around 100 Hz and allow his occasional higher notes to pop out a little more obviously. Let's switch back to drums again. We went with a fairly minimal setup for this session with the bulk of the drum sound coming from just three mics. A single overhead ribbon mic positioned above the rack tom and pointing at the snare. Plus a pair of omni condensers almost touching the wall behind the drummer and acting like boundary mics. I then added just two spot mics, the kick mic that we heard earlier, plus another to pick out the floor tom. Using fewer mics and taking more time to position each of them can often give better results than slavishly miking each drum and then trying to fit it all together afterwards. And I am in general quite happy with the sound we achieved. However, there are sections of the song which make heavy use of the toms, and the rack tom is a little too loud at times. This is mostly due to the ribbon mic, which with hindsight I should maybe have positioned a little bit higher. But the ribbon is also contributing much of the low body of the snare drum, and I can't turn it down without changing the overall kit sound. So I'll load up a compressor for the ribbon mic and see if I can tune the side chain to react only to the rack tom and not the snare. And actually, this isn't so easy using the built-in filters. The low fundamental of the rack tom is too close to that of the snare drum, and I can't isolate the tom well enough to stop the compressor reacting to the snare as well. I'm therefore going to take a more surgical approach and activate the external side chain inputs. Then patch a Pro-Q equaliser over these inputs. This is how the setup would look in a modular host. The EQ is only affecting the sidechain inputs that the compressor is listening to, just like the built-in sidechain filters. So if I want to hear the EQ I'm dialing in, I need to press the audition button for the compressor sidechain. So let's set the analyzer in Pro-Q to maximum resolution. And we can see that, though close together, the snare drum and rack tom have distinctly different fundamental frequencies. I'll double click the bottom of the graph to add a notch filter to take the energy out of the snare. And let's also dial in a narrow boost to exaggerate the tom. Obviously this sounds a bit odd, but of course we won't be hearing this signal directly. Let's turn off audition. And I can now quite easily dial in compression that only catches the rack toms and doesn't affect the snare too much. Using an external EQ instead of the built-in filters also allows us to be more subtle in our processing. Let's go back to where we started and pull up the main bus compressor again. But this time I'll patch in another Pro-Q for the sidechain. 
can now choose from a range of different slopes for the high pass filter. Or alternatively, I could pull in a low shelving filter instead and just reduce the levels of the low frequencies slightly. This is equivalent to raising the compressor threshold for just those low frequencies. I can extend this principle further by boosting frequencies to make the compressor more sensitive to them. Boosting around 3 kHz is the same as reducing the compressor threshold for just that frequency band, and might help to smooth out jagged edges from a mix by making the compressor work harder in that region. While a boost in the low mid-range might help to reduce muddiness or congestion in a mix. So we can see that using filters or EQ to change the signal that the compressor is hearing can provide a wide range of creative and problem-solving options in both mixing and mastering contexts and is a powerful addition to your audio engineering toolbox. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.